while they were questioning me there. The police on duty, maybe he was a police chief, was waving his head. This is not true. Not this one, he was shouting. We know everything. What you are telling in, not the real issue, he meant. Something like the Anti-Terror Crime Bureau. I went right there. A burly person with a dirty beard greeted me there. After that, he stood in front of me. What did you say to the judge in court? You said so and so and so on? He started beating me there. There were other people inside the branch. There were two to three policemen around. They took your statement in Edgerman, but it is incomplete, they said. We'll get the real statement here, so I never forget that statement. After that, I fainted there. They poured water on me to sober me up. I forcibly opened my eyes. He said that he was the one mentioned in the social media as raping with a baton. Indeed, this was all on social media before we were arrested. He said you won't be able to sit properly when you come out. At that moment, the police came to seek who had tortured me again. I couldn't stand in the sink while I washed my face. Stand up straight, he shouted. He was to stand tall and stand firm. Look, I can do much more worse things to you. There's also a camera in the hallway. He came to the sink and threatened me so as not to leave a mark on the camera. He warned me to walk properly or without showing beating signs on the camera. I was alone for about five days. There was no one on that floor, so they were very comfortable with me. So psychologically, they applied everything they had. They also told me that they would bring my wife. We can keep you for 14 days, but we can also increase this to 28 days with the decision of the prosecutor. We'll bring your wife as well, they said. So now I'm going to prepare the materials for torture, said one police officer. The police officer next to him held him to stop. Let's wait and see, he suggested. They took my pants down, so to give me the impression that they were going to rape me. So they took it down before going into custody to say we're going to do it. People feel trapped there, edged, because their torturer talks to the prosecutor. He is with them, so there's nothing anyone can do for you there. After that, threats continued. I'll shoot you in the head here. No one will hear about you. He pulled out the gun next to me and put the bolt in my mouth. After that, the doctors came and see my condition, but he doesn't do anything. He says there are no signs of torture. They suppress them there as well, so they never leave them alone. Two to three people are always with the doctor, and the doctor cannot feel comfortable there.